Welcome to part two of our exploration of the weird versions of Street Fighter 2 that exist and have been released over the years. In my previous video, I looked at the Sega Master System version of Street Fighter 2, which was both a huge achievement on the hardware it was released on and also something of a lacklustre mess. It was great, but it didn't really live up to the masterpiece that was Street Fighter 2. But oh boy, was that a treat when compared to some of the other weird versions of Street Fighter 2 that are out there. For those of you who don't know, Street Fighter 2 is the hit 1991 arcade game from Capcom, which has been ported to almost every console under the sun. In this series, I'll be taking a look at the unique versions of the game that were released quite often on systems that weren't up to the challenge. And in today's video, we'll be looking at the Amiga version of the game. So, here's a little backstory. When I first got into gaming, my first system that I really got into, the main system that I had to play games on, was the Amiga 500. And it was awesome! It kept me playing games night and day until I got the Amiga 1200 and no game was more exciting to get for the system than Street Fighter 2. Playing the full arcade game on the Amiga was amazing and it was exactly like I remembered from the arcade. Or at least that's what my stupid nine-year-old brain told me at the time. In reality, the Amiga game, which would work on the Amiga 500 as humble as it was, was very compromised compared to the arcade game. And although it holds its own compared to the Super Nintendo version in some ways, in most other ways it certainly does not. The characters are large and detailed on the Amiga, but the animation feels a lot more choppy than the arcade game or the snares or the Mega Drive versions. There is animation on the backgrounds, but this is limited compared to the original. Whilst fighting Dalsim, I didn't see the elephants move once, and I looked really, really hard. Also, don't expect the parallax scrolling backgrounds you see in the arcade. But heck, this was the 1991 arcade game playable across three or four floppy disks on a home computer that was released in the mid-1980s. It's truthfully a fairly extraordinary feat that we got the graphics as good on the Amiga version as they were. And if you've ever played or seen the graphics of Super Street Fighter 2 or Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo that were both ported on the Amiga, you'll know that the original version of Street Fighter 2 is much better than either one of those. Sound-wise, the game is also fairly respectable. I don't think it has all of the sound effects, but there are the announcers saying FIGHT and you'll hear Sonic Boom and lots of punches and kicks. It definitely lacks the names of the countries that you fly to, and I don't remember hearing the likes of the sounds of M. Bison flying toward you. You know that... Yeah, that one. It also lacks some of the music tracks, but it has a decent selection still in there. So, the big question is, if this port has reasonable graphics and most of the sounds, why is it included in this series of weird ports of Street Fighter 2? The answer is simple. The controls. This Street Fighter 2 arcade game gave you a joystick and six action buttons. These were for light, medium and heavy versions of both punches and kicks. The Amiga gave you a joystick and one action button. Yup, they somehow had to figure out how to let you do all of the moves, including the special moves, in a game with only one button to press. And you know what? It actually works surprisingly well. The Amiga version of Street Fighter 2 is far from the only version that has reduced controls. The Master System game, which I looked at in the previous video, only gave you two action buttons, but at least you had a separate punch and kick button. 
The Mega Drive allowed you to switch between punches and kicks using the start button, and then the A, B and C buttons would flip back and forth between the punches and the kicks. Sega knew how important this game was and even released a six button joypad because of it. And yes, there are portable games like the Game Boy version that only had two buttons as well, but only a couple of versions limited you to just one action button for everything. Playing the Amiga version for the purpose of recording this footage brought back some memories of how the gameplay was achieved. Truthfully, after I got my Super Nintendo with a copy of Street Fighter 2 Turbo, I never looked back to the Amiga version until today. But the way the controls work on the Amiga version is both what makes it truly a weird version of the game and also fairly genius. If you move the directional buttons or joystick, you will move your character left and right and you'll also be able to duck and jump. That's still the same as the arcade game, but then if you press the action button, it will simply punch. It is either a light or medium punch and seemingly that's all you have to work with. But the way the Amiga version works is that by pressing the directions at the same time as the fire button will trigger a different move. Down and fire may do a low kick, but diagonal down and fire will do a low punch. The other diagonal will achieve a third. Towards and fire will do a kick, and away and fire may do a medium punch. This continued so on and so forth, giving you more and more moves to do. And the same applies when you jump in the air. Different combinations of fire and directions will do different things. You can still do button combination sequences to pull off special moves. But truthfully, this is an aspect I didn't fully work out in my recent playthrough. This did bring back memories of me finding it so hard to pull off a dragon punch back in the day and discovering them to be much easier on the Super Nintendo. The game on the Amiga controls similarly to other fighting games on the platform and the one that comes to mind is Body Blows. And again, even though I know that that game isn't anywhere nearly as well regarded as Street Fighter, I can see why the two had a similar level of esteem in my mind after playing the Amiga Street Fighter 2 today. They played fairly similar control wise and back then I didn't know that Street Fighter 2 was all it is and that Body Blows was just the Amiga knockoff. Heck, I enjoyed it and you know, I have played Body Blows more recently and it still was a bit weird but I can now see that they were just copying the formula from the Amiga Street Fighter 2. The Amiga version of Street Fighter 2 would certainly feel very weird for a modern player to attempt to play these days if they had never experienced it back in the day. But whilst it feels very different to play compared to most other versions, it's not the weirdest version of Street Fighter 2 out there, but we'll save that for another video. Unlike some others, this does have a full roster of characters from the arcade game and it does have all of the stages and it does a genuinely good job at capturing the Street Fighter 2 magic. Its only hindrance is in the control department. Oh, and it had loading times which weren't awful, but weren't really that much fun either. Still, if memory serves, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo for the Amiga may have been on 12 or 13 or 14 discs, something absolutely insane. So that's going to wrap things up for part two of this journey down the Street Fighter 2 memory lane. And keep your eyes peeled for the next chapter, as there are still many versions of the game to delve into and there are still many weird ones to go through. If you haven't seen the previous version on the Sega Master System version, which was only released in Brazil, do check it out. And again, check out everything else we've got on the channel because we've got lots of little documentaries popping up, some hardware reviews and some reviews of retro and some modern games. So smash that subscribe button here on the Geek Battle Gaming YouTube channel. And as always, if you want to check out the article version of any of the videos, head over to www.extreamed.tv forward slash gaming and so with that until next time stay safe
always stay extremed and ciao for now. Boom, and we're off the air. <laughs>